Hello. Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. Hello, and thank you for watching. For the past few weeks, Central Square has played host to public property as that we have a tragedy of the commons issue. Saying happy holidays, team. Voluntary interactions where individuals are free to act so long as they don't initiate force. This morning, we gather in Manford, Sergeant Tom Ball. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Johnny Ray. And I'm Allie Havens. The City Council met to decide on the Bearcat acquisition this past Thursday. The council room was packed with concerned citizens, residents, and news media. Brad Ryder, the newsman for WKBK, posted this video on his YouTube channel, Keen News Now. Thanks, but no Regarding a communication from Councilor Clark requesting the reconsideration of the acceptance of a Homeland Security grant from the Bearcat Armored Vehicle. <coughs> On a vote of 5 to 0, the Finance Organization and Personnel Committee recommends accepting the communication from Councilor Clark as informational. Signed, Mitchell H. Greenwald. As we consider this next item, obviously there's a lot of interest in this next item, I would ask that all councilors remember that we're elected to act in the best interests of the citizens of Keene. Our jurisdiction is local. I would ask that you please restrict your remarks to the local <coughs> issues that are germane and relevant to this discussion, and anything else will be ruled out of order. <coughs> Last December, Keene was offered a Homeland Security grant to fund the purchase of a Bearcat vehicle. The vote at the time was 13 to 1 in favor. In January, a letter was received from Councilor Clark requesting a review and a potentially a, a reconsideration of the issue by the new council, which is allowed by our rules of order. Uh, the Finance Organization Personnel Committee held a public meeting in which uh, there was verbal input, written input, and all of this has been recorded into the record. The committee considered the information, again, it has been recorded, and the decision made by the committee at the time was to accept it as informational, but it did not recommend any further action. I move to amend the committee report so as to rescind the prior action taken by the City Council on December 15, 2011 and to reject the Homeland Security grant for the Lenco Bearcat vehicle. I wanted to bring up a statement that the Lenco uh, representative had made to the national press about this issue. And what he said was that this grant was the opportunity for Lenco to tap in to a $34 billion domestic violence market, which in my mind really meant only one thing, that it was a poster child for all of that waste and fraud that we're talking about, and all the politicians in the world are running around saying that they're going to do something about. You know, I know some of you here are, 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 are going to vote for this because, you know, you're afraid about explaining your vote to some grieving widow. We aren't going to be any grieving widows because this vehicle isn't going to save the life of one police officer. It's not about public safety. It's not about safety. You know, this vehicle is not going to save even one life. It's not about that. It's not about opposing your police department. How do you feel about it? Is this the right thing to do or is it not the right thing? I received a lot of phone calls about the Bearcat, at probably about 80, and of that, 10% um, are for it. It, it. it isn't, I just don't think we have that level of crime. This is in LA, it's not New York, it's not Miami. Um, we don't have gang wars and riots where we need batons and tear gas. And fellow <coughs> counselors, I ask you to think about this. Yes, we are a little keen New Hampshire, but we are not exempt from catastrophe. <coughs> if this Bearcat saved one life, it's worth it. We need to protect our friends and neighbors that have accepted the responsibility of working for the city of Keene as police officers. We need to provide them with the best possible equipment, and therefore I absolutely <coughs> support the acquisition of the Bearcat. For example, um, Douglas County, Georgia, Purchase their money with Council, Council, just a second. 
at the Finance Organization and Personnel Committee meeting to speak, and we didn't interrupt you. We sat quietly and we listened courteously to everything you had to say. If you're not prepared to give us the same degree of courtesy, I'm going to ask that you be removed. Now, I would ask no more outbursts. The biggest reason that um, <coughs> I'm voting for it, because it's not just going to be a police vehicle. There are other things in emergency operations that we can use it for, and I suspect that um, Chief Lamborough of the Operations Center will coordinate that. I, I definitely want to support the police, and I definitely want the police to continue to be there with us, uh, I think that's been their strength, and that's one of the reasons we have such a wonderful community is, the, is because of the visibility and the, the personality of the police department. And I think coming from Ward 1, we have lots of contact with the police. If they feel that we, that we can benefit from this Bearcat, then I'm going to believe it. If, if you vote yes, you are voting in favor of the amendment and against the acquisition of the Bearcat. If you vote no, you are voting against the amendment and in favor of the acquisition of the Bearcat. Are you ready for a vote? All those in favor of the amendment? All those opposed? To some degree, perhaps, the newer counselors were listening more closely to the, uh, you know, to the calls that they got, and, and you know, I, I think it's important that counselors recognize we, we don't govern by referendum. We, we, uh, we have to use our own judgment, and, you know, we don't stick our finger in the wind to see which way the wind is blowing when we make our decisions. Well, the sun will rise tomorrow, and we'll deal with other issues. City councilors who voted in favor of their Bearcat being added to the KDP's arsenal of policing tools justify their vote by saying that it would protect police lives. However, popular opinion is that such a vehicle is not needed for a small town like Keene. Councilor Mitch Greenwald said at the meeting, quote, We need to protect our friends and neighbors that have accepted the responsibility of working for the city of Keene as police officers. We need to provide them with the best possible equipment, and therefore I absolutely support the acquisition of the Bearcat, unquote. The U.S. Department of Labor in 2007 found that despite claims that police officers must fear for their lives on a daily basis, police and sheriff patrol officers work in a relative work in relatively safe conditions compared to loggers, fishers, aircraft pilots, farmers, and miners, among others. In fact, of the top 20 most dangerous jobs, the Department of Labor found that police rank low on the list at just number 18. As, our lo as for our local police department, no keen police officer has ever been killed on duty. But if counselors are actually concerned with officer safety and not just giving in to police's lust for an exciting new toy, it is important to consider what factors make police work dangerous. It seems the real dangers are associated with the alleged duties of the police. The few laws that are routinely enforced relative to the thousands on the books are typically ones in which the state is a supposed victim. For example, the drug war. This creates an atmosphere perpetrated by people in the government, carried out by uniformed enforcers, that breeds feelings of intimidation by ordinary peaceful folk in a community. Police in the United States are trained to view the public that they are supposed to protect as a mass of potential criminals, and it is not uncommon for rookie police to be shown videos of police being killed on duty is an example of why officer safety is important, while overlooking the likelihood of such occurrences. The mutual distrust between public and the police puts both parties at risk. The Keene City Council and other offices of local government, including the judicial branch system, um, over and over again, trust the words of members of the police force over the public. This issue will likely be left alone without much more ado. However, concerned individuals may view this as another step towards an Orwellian future. That is, at least until the people decide they won't take it anymore. Thank you, Allie. Residents and cop blockers Adamo Freeman and Pete Ayer were on John Stossel's Illegal Everything to discuss the challenges of recording public officials. Here's a clip from that program. Coming up. Where are you going to jail? In America these days, you never know what's legal. 
you're going away. You're going to be arrested for trespassing. <laughs> But can police legally arrest you just for filming the authorities? That's next. Our government adds thousands of new laws every year. The feds alone added 80,000 pages of new regulations just last year. Add in state and local laws, and we're drowning in rules. But just disobeying one of these could lead to the police locking me up. So given that the police have the power to lock me up or shoot me, it's important that we be able to keep an eye on them. Fortunately, that's easier today because even our phones have cameras. And a camera is a powerful tool oh, for, your as the Romans said, sir, watching the watch. Excuse me. You're going away. You're going to be arrested for trespass. I did nothing. The problem is that often the watchmen don't want to be watched. In Jones County, Mississippi, a highway patrolman told Pete Ayer, stop your RV. Pete's an activist who likes to videotape encounters with authorities. Yes, sir. Open that side door for me, man. Turn that camera off, dude. What's that? You feel me? Yeah. Turn it off. How come? Are you feeling me? Yes. Turn it off for me. He'd broken no traffic laws, but maybe the police were suspicious of shirtless, tattooed Pete and his big trailer with New Hampshire plates. Pete's friend filmed the encounter and said, I would like to keep everybody accountable in this situation. Apparently this officer didn't like that. Okay. Another arrived and said, I'm not shutting it off. Officer, are oh, you going to jail? Excuse me? Sir, the cops grabbed his camera and arrested him and his friends. They held us in jail, wouldn't let us make phone calls. After about 12 hours, the police let them go. They charged me with uh, possession of a beer in a dry county because there was one unopened beer in the refrigerator of the RV. They had nothing else to stick on me. They couldn't charge him with filming the police because that's legal. And that's a good thing. Just outside my office, a cop claimed a bicyclist rode into him on purpose. But then this video turned up and showed that the officer was the aggressor. That cop was eventually fired. Maybe video like this is why some don't want to be filmed. You guys need something? I'm just, this is my front yard. I'm just recording what you're doing. It's my right. Actually, not from the sidewalk. This is my yard. In Rochester, New York, when Emily Good heard police stopping a driver outside her house, she went out on her front lawn to film the encounter. What One officer didn't you? like that. You. I'm so behind us officers when we're doing a, pu a traffic stop. I'm allowed to stand in my yard. We'll stand in your house. I'm allowed to stand in my yard. I'm yes, going to stay in. I was in cotton pajamas. You could tell I was holding nothing. I, I don't think that there's any reason to feel threatened. All I have is a camera. I'm clearly wearing nothing. I have no weapons. It does not matter. You know what? You're going to go to jail. I'm observing what they're doing and they're arresting me. I don't understand what's going on. The officer took her to jail and charged her with obstructing governmental administration. I did nothing. I did nothing. I'm not doing it. I think that the young police officer is high on his power. High on his power is a little harsh. Mm -hmm. He's doing his job. No, it's not his job to take people, uh, <laughs> observers, from their own property and put them in jail. A month later, Emily put this video online. It was viewed thousands of times, and some viewers criticized the police. So you post the video on YouTube, and they come back. In uniform, four officers. Police showed up outside a meeting of Emily and her friends and started writing tickets for parking violations, like parking farther than 12 inches from the curb. Can I see it? Can I see the ruler? Her friend taped that. Okay, that's 12 inches from the curb. After the media picked up on the story, the police chief said his officer's actions were inappropriate. Charges against Emily were dropped, but no officer was ever punished. They never are, as far as we know, even when they arrest news cameramen. Go away now! Go away now! Phil Dads tried to film a police pursuit. All right, you're going away. Okay, I'm, I'm walking away, but I'm, I'm asking you... you know, because, it's, stand, uh, because it's an active scene and you're leaving. Okay, where can I All right, no place. Me? Go away, no. He went away. He moved across the street, but then the officer drove up to him there. Sergeant, I told PIO they told me to go back to the Put it down. Open. Put it down. Put it down. Put it down. You're under arrest. They charged Phil with obstructing government. Did you obstruct the government? Absolutely not. 
at the point I was arrested, I was probably a thousand feet away from the officers. Charges were dropped, but again, the officer was never punished. None of the officers who arrested Pete, Emily, or Phil would talk to us, but the head of one police union sent us this written comment. He says this has become a serious safety issue. I'm afraid something terrible will happen. Well, the opposite is true, because if the, if the officers are doing the right thing, the video is going to show that. True. This hijacker rammed a cop car. The officer shot the hijacker, killed him, and then was exonerated of murder because this video showed he'd acted in self-defense. Are you recording me right now? Yes. Some officers now understand that it's just part of the job to be filmed. If you're a police officer, what do you want to do? Make sure it's safe, right? Correct. Yeah. Well, it should look good on YouTube either way. So let's give three cheers for Officer Matt Lyons of Oceanside, California. I'm sure you get a good picture of me so you know exactly what I look like. It's refreshing to hear an officer welcome a camera. And remember, my name is Officer Lyons with the Oceanside Police Department. My badge number is 1093. God bless America. Joining us for this next segment is Free Keen TV correspondent Derek J. Freeman. Welcome, Derek. Hey, Derek. Thank you, Johnny and Allie. Some activists decided to hand out some literature to young people at their school, a place where one might imagine new information and knowledge is welcomed. I wanted to get some video of this happening for my own records and also to hold everyone accountable. While at the school, I encountered some bullies, but they may not be dressed as you'd expect. Take a look. Oh, great. We're getting ready to go to the Keene Middle School, and the goal is to reach out to young people and give them, you know, the website that, uh, or interesting websites uh, to visit so they can learn about the ideas of uh, liberty, hopefully. I'm Kelly Voluntarius, and we are going to Keene Middle School to hand out some literature. Wow. Look, they're trying to run us over. No. <laughs> Does she it's recognize so us? Absurd. She must. Yes, she must. You can tell she's been frowning for a long time. <laughs> she's got a perma frown. My God. Uh, oh, she put it down. Jeez. Oh my God. <laughs> Me. Mean it. Get it away. You or, just assaulted no, me. I don't care. You don't even belong here. Maybe that's assault. I don't care. He's what not gonna video. I have a right. He is not gonna videotape. You do me. not have a right. You're in public and you're a public employee. I am on school property. You're on public property. No. This is school property. And he's a jerk. Why is he a jerk? He's just doing his job. No, I am, and you're in my way. I don't see him being in your way. And I will call my boss at the police station. Who's come that? On, is that around. is that Lieutenant Maxfield? Nope. I know Maxfield. You should call Maxfield. I'd love to have Maxfield come out. You guys think you're so great. I don't have a jerk. Well, what's what's being? Uh, you, you just like, came up to me and assaulted me. You're the one no, who's I didn't. Hitting. I asked you to get the camera out of my face. I didn't see him anywhere near your face, actually. Oh yes, he you, was. You approached him. Oh, I, I saw don't that. You walked right up to him. Yeah. And you swung your stop sign at him. No, and you I went hit, like this. And you hit his camera. I don't care. I saw it all happen. Now clearly you don't care. No, you're the one. You're all jerks. I think you're projecting, man. I'm not even gonna listen uh, to I think you're projecting when you call uh, when you call us jerks. I forgive you. For your unkind comments. What's your name? What is that? Oh no, I've already had a conversation. Hi Chandler. See ya. Have a good day. Hello sir. Do you know this woman's name? Oh, alright. You can do that. I gave you permission. Come on. Can you please come well, honey? Can I offer you some literature? Oh uh, yes. Yeah. Have a wonderful day. 
How was the skull? Good. Pretty good. Good. Uh, this is where I was standing when I was assaulted by the uh, security guard here, the crossing guard lady, who swung her sign at me and then hit my camera. Um, not two seconds later, uh, after I turned the camera off, I saw Mr. Jason Short, who is arriving right here, right now. Oh, and looks like a car is rolling up right here also. Hey, it's a, it's another superstar. I only have one request. What's that? Can you get out of the street and out of the crosswalk so people aren't stopping? Deal. You can stay on the sidewalk <laughs> back here and they can see just oh, fine. Okay. But just as long as you don't go on the school part, then you know, there's no issue. Oh, just, just try here. not to make it look like you're trying to cross or we'll have a traffic jam. Yeah, no problem. All right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. You guys. Oh, wait, wait, hold on a second. Hey, hold Mr. Mr. Kapcha. Yes, it's the police fighting squad. Police fighting squad. Police fighting squad. Police fighting squad. Have a nice day, Kapcha. You deserve a good one. So what what just happened? Or is this the police hugging squad that you were? I'm trying. Trying. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have a wonderful day. You sure deserve it. Yes, yes you do. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to see that. It is disturbing to watch some public officials attacking peaceful people. What we just witnessed were the conscious actions of two ladies with whom the responsibility of guarding the children of Keene is placed. Neither was friendly. In fact, they both seem to forget who they work for, you and me, the taxpayers. These women not only work for the public school, but they also wear the badges of the Keene police. The recording of public officials in public during the course of their official duties is a well-established right. What do you think would happen to you if you or a coworker behaved violently to a paying customer while on the job? With jobs so scarce and the workforce so plentiful, do you think it would be difficult to find someone gentle and friendly to replace these women who guard your children? The aggressive behavior exhibited by the second crossing guard, who admits on camera that she assaulted me and doesn't care, is only made worse by her attempt to avoid taking personal responsibility for her actions by insisting to her supervisor that he not reveal her name. The rabbit hole goes deeper when her supervisor, also a worker for the school, then completely ignores me and refused to give a name and contact number, even after I tell him I was assaulted by his coworker. I don't know why the police were called, but when they arrived, they did not tell us, they told us not to go in the street, although we weren't. When Ian and Kelly offered a hug to Officer Jason Short, he threatens them with cages if they step onto school property. He wants you to pay for it, but only he is allowed to step on the hollowed ground that is a government prison. I mean, school. Thank you, Derek. So what was the, uh, the upshot of the, you, you guys brought some literature with you? Did you, uh, if you're sort of constrained to the sidewalk outside, do you, are you able to, to give the literature out that you wanted to? That's a great question. I wasn't there distributing literature that day. My goal was to cover the event for both the Shire Free Press and my website, livefreerdance.com. I uh, was interested in just covering the activism of some people who are local who would like to hand out some new information to some young people. It is difficult, however, to get information into the hands of these young people uh, because the activists were so restricted in their location. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the police hugging squad used to be something from what I hear is, you know, the police were pretty much, they went along with it and, you know, it sounded like kind of a, a nice peaceful way for, pe for the police to um, sort of connect with people in a way that they usually don't get to the public. So, um, but, I, but I know, th I've heard that uh, lately they haven't been as receptive that they don't like to do it as much now. I haven't seen an officer take a hug from any member of the public in quite a long time. 
uh, I think it's a wonderful uh, act to embrace uh, another fellow human being and show love and compassion for others. Uh, but I am disturbed that uh, so-called public servants would be so hesitant to have any intimate contact with uh, another member of the public. I know that I recently had an encounter where I wasn't trying to give a hug but shake the hand of Mr. Miola, the chief of police in Keene, after he admitted that he was wrong about the recent parking meter decision. Not only did he refuse to shake my hand, he walked away from me and totally ignored me. Wow. So I would like to see more hugging. That would, that would be nice, but it uh, has to, of course, be consensual, and if the police don't want to, uh, I think it says something about, uh, about them, but, um, you know, it's, it's okay to refuse a hug if you're just not comfortable, but I, I wonder why they would not be comfortable, because, you know, if it's a free teen activist, then they haven't been shown to be violent at all, and they would obviously wouldn't be in danger by accepting it, so I just wonder if it's a you know, we don't like your kind sort of thing. I'm not sure. One thing with which the police seem to be very comfortable is making threats to peaceful people. As you saw in this video, Jason Short makes threats to the activists if they step onto the property, and he smiles while he does it. I'm gonna have to cut you off there, Derek. We have a short video from Adam Kokesh to play. You, as a free, beautiful, independent human being with inalienable rights, own yourself. As a result, you can do what you want with your own body and own the product of your labor. The implication is that it is morally wrong to initiate force against someone else or their property because to do so is to violate their rights. Therefore, all human interactions should be free of force, fraud, and coercion, and people should be free to exercise their rights, limited only by respect for the rights of others. When you learned don't hit and don't steal, it wasn't unless you work for the government. When you learned thou shalt not kill, it wasn't unless your dear leader gives you a gun and a uniform and a one-way ticket to the other side of the world. Government is force, an opinion with a gun, and force is a poor substitute for persuasion. Governments frighten us into thinking we need them, but with knowledge, philosophy, and technology, we are empowering ourselves and each other to have the courage to move past the paradigm of statism and restrain government to only moral uses of force, at least until we replace it with the cooperative free market solutions that will soon render it obsolete. Coercion is a poor substitute for persuasion. That was my favorite line from that whole video. I think it really sort of, you know, you could just say that and that would sort of sum up the ideas of liberty, for me at least. Yeah, violence is a pretty old-fashioned idea, I think. A little backwards. A little backwards, yeah, mm -hmm. I would say. I think, I think people can move past it. Free Keen TV is always seeking to improve the show and provide a better viewing experience. If you have any feedback, please feel free to send us an email at tv at freekeen.com. If you disagree with some of the opinions expressed here, please send us an email and maybe we'll, we will have you on the show to give your side. Thanks for watching. I'm Allie Havens. And I'm Johnny Ray wishing you and yours, oh, nothing but the best.